Three months ago today, the Prime Minister said, test and trace can be a real game changer for us. Yesterday, the Prime Minister said the complete opposite. Standing there, he said testing and tracing has very little or nothing to do with the spread or transmission of the disease. Both positions cannot be right. Which one is it, Prime Minister? That we now have the ability to see in granular detail uh, where the epidemic is breaking out, exactly which groups are being infected. That's why we've been able uh, to deliver the local lockdowns, and that's why we're able to tell now at this stage that it is necessary to take the decisive action that we are, and which, you know, which I think he supports, or he did yesterday. So why yesterday did the promise to say that testing and tracing had very little or nothing to do with the spread or transmission of the disease. I hesitate to, to <laughs> reprove the uh, right honourable gentleman, but a, a, a flaw he seems sometimes to fall into is not listening to my previous yeah. answer, uh, Mr. Speaker. I gave a very, I very, gave a very, very clear answer. Mr. Speaker, I listened to the answer that the Prime Minister gave to the questions. That's why I asked him the question, because yesterday he said the complete opposite of what he said today. <laughs> everybody who was in the chamber, everybody in Reeves Hansard will see it. Last week, before the Liaison Committee, he admitted testing currently has huge problems. Is the explanation from the Prime Minister that we haven't got enough capacity because nobody could have expected the rise in demand? That's the Dido Harding defence. Or is it we've got all the capacity we need, it's just that people are being unreasonable in asking for tests. That's the Hancock defence. I must say, I think that the continual attacks by the opposition on, on, Di, on, Dido, on Dido Harding in particular are, 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 unseemly, are unseemly and unjustified. We're going to go up to 500,000 tests by the end of October. That is, that is the work of Dido Harding and her team. And I think, actually, again, you know, what, what we want to hear, and what I frankly want to hear, is more of the spirit of togetherness that we had yesterday, Mr Speaker, because, because this, is, this is an opportunity to support NHS test and trace. This is an opportunity to get behind that scheme, to encourage people to believe in it and its, in its efficacy. Instead, he constantly knocks it from the sidelines, Mr Speaker. My wife works for the NHS. My mother worked for the NHS. My sister works for the NHS. So I'm not going to take lectures from the Prime Minister on supporting the NHS. Three weeks ago, millions of children went back to school. That's a good thing. Then the inevitable happened. Kids get coughs, bugs, flu. That's what happens. It's in the job description. But there's no effective system in place to deal with it. 99.9% .9 of our schools are now back. And, 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 and in, spite, in spite of all his attempts, I may say, throughout the summer, to sow doubt on the idea that schools were safe. The government's own department shows that one in eight children are off school this week. That disrupts their education. Whether it's COVID symptoms or other symptoms is, is nothing to the point. If the Prime Minister doesn't see that, He's really out of touch. Health measures and economic measures are now dangerously out of sync. Let me quote the Director General of the CBI. There can be no avoiding the crushing blow new measures will bring for thousands of firms. It's vital, she says, that all announcements of restrictions go hand in hand with clarity on the business support to protect jobs. Why wasn't that announced yesterday? The work that this government has done to protect the economy of this country, uh, to support the jobs of 12 million people uh, through the furlough scheme, an overall expenditure of about £160 billion, has been unexampled anywhere else in the world. And I, I think he should pay tribute uh, to the Chancellor and, to, and his work. And we will go forward with further creative and imaginative schemes to keep our economy moving. The CBI, the TUC and trade unions, the Federation of Small Businesses, the British Chamber of Commerce, the Governor of the Bank of England, they're all calling on the Prime Minister to stop and rethink, support the businesses affected, don't withdraw furlough. We've been saying it for months. When is the Prime Minister finally going to act? These are indeed tough times, and I have no doubt that many businesses, many employees are feeling a great deal of anxiety and uncertainty, and we will do our level best uh, to protect them throughout this period. The reality of the, of the opposition position has been exposed. The cat's out of the bag, uh, Mr Speaker, because it was his shadow education secretary who said of, of, the, of, said of the present uh, crisis, she said, don't let a good crisis go to waste. That's, that's the real approach of the Labour Party, Mr Speaker, seeking, seeking to create political opportunity out of a crisis.